All right, now here we are. <laughs> All right, so hi everyone, um, glad to be here uh, and glad to uh, start getting us into uh, where we're, um, what, what we can start using this stuff for, this Gen AI. Um, so my name is Kathy Wu, um, and I'm an assistant professor, and I study AI in transportation. Um, and I'm a computer scientist by training, but when I was asked to come here and give this talk on Gen AI in transportation, there actually weren't a whole lot of use cases that I was aware of. Um, so I really appreciate this opportunity uh, to dive in, and naturally one of the first things I did was ask ChatGPT, um, unfortunately, it wasn't too insightful, so unfortunately I had to do the hard work myself. So um, what I really wanted to know is, um, you know, how can this technology, Gen AI, actually move the needle on some really long-standing, tricky challenges in transportation? Um, so I did a lot of reading, I had a lot of discussions. Um, I ended up combing through about 100 ideas, and um, I've, over the last few months, I've really come to realize that uh, Gen AI has this potential to help um, uncover some really useful data, generate actually some useful data for some tricky, um, long-standing challenges in transportation. So I'm going to share um, three of the more remarkable use cases that I've come across over the last few months, including some that are more integral to my own work. So the first use case um, is uh, the, is, is applying Gen AI to generating edge cases uh, for autonomous vehicles. So here's a, um, here's a picture of a windshield, uh, sorry, here's a picture of a chair flying across the windshield on a highway. You probably didn't come across a chair on your drive in today, but with three million, sorry, three trillion miles driven each year just in the US, uh, rare scenarios like these are more often than you might imagine. So this is often called the long tail of edge cases. Um, because they're so rare, we actually don't have a ton of them in our data sets. So um, that means there's a lot of interest in how to find, generate, and simulate these edge cases so that we can actually test our autonomous vehicles against them. Um, so that when autonomous vehicles come across these, they know what to do. So um, here is... Uh, my apologies. Ah, okay. So um, uh, here is um, some recent work published in Nature. Um, it's led by Professor Henry Liu at the University of Michigan, and it uses reinforcement learning to generate edge cases. These are not edge cases in the form of flying chairs. These are more edge cases that have to do with the vehicles surrounding an autonomous vehicle and how they behave around that vehicle. Um, so what this work does is it uses reinforcement learning to basically perturb those agents and generate uh, driving scenarios that are more tricky, but still produce realistic crash rates. And then um, this is used to generate an intelligent testing environment in simulation uh, for testing the autonomous vehicle. Now imagine augmenting this technology with additional generative AI technologies. Uh, for example, generating uh, 3D models of arbitrary objects like chairs, um, or generating um, uh, surrounding driver trajectories that are even more realistic. And we might just be well on our way to a more complete set of edge cases. Um, so uh, next I want to talk about um, congestion, traffic congestion, and how Gen AI may be used to model and predict um, congestion. So we're all familiar with what congestion is, um, what it does to time, greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution, and also crashes. And one prominent uh, feature of congestion is that um, there are these slowdowns that propagate through the traffic flow. These are often called traffic waves. So even though all the cars move forwards in space, these waves actually move backwards in space. Um, so congestion has historically been really hard to accurately predict and thus mitigate. So I'm going to first talk about modeling and prediction and then uh, mitigation, and I'll mention some of my own work in this area. So up until now, um, it's mostly been physics-based approaches that have been used to model these systems. But these systems are inherently chaotic. They're, they're very difficult to model small events like lane changes that will send ripples through the traffic system and create congestion. 
So we can actually take inspiration from another domain that's also chaotic, also complex, and for which um, physics-based models have dominated um, for decades. But now, Gen AI models are actually starting to match that performance of physics-based models and, um, and is be starting to become on par. And this is the area of weather forecasting. So to give one example, this is, um, this is a model recently published in Science by Google DeepMind called GraphCast. This is a one-day prediction model, and the way it works is you predict one day, you take that output and feed it back into the input of the GraphCast model, and then you unroll for 10 days in an autoregressive manner. Um, this is done across space over the entire planet using graph neural networks at, various uh, at multiple resolutions. Um, so what if we could, um, you know, take some of these same ideas and apply them to traffic congestion. Um, so we could do this. We can imagine doing this meter by meter, second by second. And this kind of high resolution data is starting to become available. Um, and it could soon be used to actually train Gen AI models for congestion. This graphic here is pulled from a new research platform uh, in Tennessee called I-24 Motion, led by Professor Dan Work at Vanderbilt University. This is what's called a time-space diagram, and it basically represents the trajectory of every vehicle on a stretch of road. So the x-axis is, uh, is time, the y-axis is space, um, and it captures everything that was in that earlier traffic video. The red traces actually indicate the slowdowns, the congestion events, um, just like in, in that video. So, um, you know, beyond applying the uh, techniques from weather forecasting, we can actually incorporate a lot of multimodality um, from all sorts of data sources with Gen AI. So um, the point here is actually that while weather, which is already benefiting from Gen AI, um, it actually, weather actually is largely governed by physics, but traffic is governed by people. And so the extent to which we can actually understand how people think, how people feel, how people act, will help us get a better handle on traffic. So um, one current challenge where we're doing some work right now is that this kind of high resolution data is actually not available in most places. The kind of data that state and federal governments have looks a bit more like, uh, like this. So it's sparsely distributed over space and time. And what we're doing is we're taking this raw data and we're using physics-based approaches to fill in the blanks. And of course, there's strong potential here to actually use Gen AI technologies like in-painting, diffusion models as well to increase that accuracy. So our vision is to actually democratize quantifying and predicting congestion so that we can mitigate it. So um, speaking of mitigation, there's an emerging science, including some of my own work, uh, shown here that by inserting the right number of vehicles at the right time, at the right places, we can actually mitigate a lot of congestion. Here, we're controlling a small fraction of the red vehicles in the traffic system, not only for straight stretches of roads, but for areas where there are uh, merge, uh, merge conflicts, as well as in city driving. Um, to design the vehicle controller, we actually use deep reinforcement learning to automatically learn traffic smoothing strategies. And these strategies can not only improve traffic throughput, but also energy efficiency and safety. And in short, Gen AI can be used to help bring these congestion mitigation ideas to reality. Okay, I wanna finish with one more near-term application of Gen AI to transportation. And this has to do with access to transportation. So to see how Gen AI might, re, right, might re, uh, address a root issue, we have to actually leave transportation for a moment. And this root issue has to do with housing and zoning. Um, it's fairly well understood that to have more accessible, affordable, sustainable transportation, we actually need greater density of housing to support more frequent transit service, walking, biking, scooting. But this is the situation that we're in now. Zoning regulations um, allow non-dense housing, single-family housing, to be built in most places. What I'm showing here is the outcome of a project called the National Zoning Atlas. It's led by Professor Sarah Bronin at Cornell Law. And this started out in Connecticut, so this is the Connecticut Zoning Atlas. What's overlaid on this map in purple is 
all the places where you can build single family housing, that's non-dense housing. In contrast, here is where you can build dense housing, defined as lots where you can, uh, that house four or more families. It's a small fraction of the space and it's hard to see, which is sort of the problem. Um, so the point is that without knowing, without you know, being able to build dense housing, it's hard to have dense housing. And recognizing this problem in the first place is a step that we need to take uh, to amend it. So now here's where Gen AI can come in. Um, to, produce this, uh, to produce this zoning atlas, this team of researchers and volunteers, they manually comb through 32,000 documents, uh, sorry, pages of textual zoning codes from Connecticut. These are long, dense legal documents to extract over 100 regulatory characteristics, including the where housing, what kind of housing is permitted, minimum lot sizes, maximum density. It's a wonderful project. And I understand from speaking with Professor Bronin that this project is now expanding beyond Connecticut. And so there's a lot of interest in how large language models could potentially help accelerate this effort by automating the extraction process, and thus generating the data that we need on housing and zoning to, um, uh, to provide for us, uh, accessible transportation. Um, so in conclusion, um, based on what I've learned, I would say that I'm you know, cautiously optimistic about Gen AI in transportation. Long-standing issues are long-standing issues, and Gen AI will by itself not move the needle, but it really brings one very powerful tool to the toolbox. And I'm very encouraged that you know, for multiple of these challenges, Gen AI might just give us the push that we need to make an impact in transportation. Thank you.